Hustle Day. Every day is a great day to hustle. Every day is a great day to launch an initiative to improve your life, your love life, your spiritual life, your health, and of course, your pockets. Happy freaking Hustle Day. If you haven't done it, be sure to get a copy of my free audio book, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Get it today. Download it and change your life today. Let's just jump with it. I'm going to make it extra crispy today. What's the meaning of hustle? A lot of people have a problem with the word hustle. And I don't have a problem with them. Because essentially, we live in a country of uneducated people. When I say uneducated, I'm not talking about a college degree or having one or not having one. I'm talking about the simple ability to think. People make decisions based on emotions. More men than at any point in history are making decisions based on emotion. And that is a serious problem to your hustle. If you're not making decisions based on logic and data and research, chances of you being successful long term are slim to none. Because there's a bunch of people who re react very emotionally to the word hustle. Look at hustle as this bad thing. Do you know Walmart used to be a bad word? Seriously. Pimp was a bad word. And people are like, well, pimp's still a bad word. Not the way I see it. I'm a member of a writer's group. And one of the things is pimping your blog. It's very ubiquitous now. But the meaning of hustle is what you want your hustle to be. There's some people, hustler, entrepreneur, there's really no difference anymore. There really isn't. You can say that word, I'm a hustler in the mixed crowd, and there will be some people that's like, I have a problem with that. I do have a problem with that. You use the word hustle. And his granddaddy used to run moonshine. Person said that to me, and I actually outed him. I was like, you have a problem with the word hustle? And the reason that you and your family are doing well financially is dear old granddad set up a nice moonshine operation and bought 500 acres in South Alabama. And 100 of those acres you end up selling to a cell phone, to cell phone tower company. And that's the reason your mama is sporting some pearls and diamonds. And he just shut up. And he's a white dude. And I know the story very, very well. Because his uncle told me the deal. We were little kids, and uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, Gary used to run moonshine. Best thing he ever did for the family. You know, some people are not proud, but I'm proud because it wasn't for Gary. When I got sick, I've been out. He paid all the bills because he had money like that. Now, it's real funny because this goes back several, several generations that a lot of people, colleges, institutions, the reason that they exist to this day is because someone hustled. Someone created their own economy. Someone created their own cash flow. Someone created something that didn't exist before or they made it better. You do not get to above average income doing average shit. Let me say that again for the people in the back and for the folks with wax in their ears. You do not get to above average income doing average shit. And that's the thing that a lot of people want to do. They want to do average shit and expect exceptional returns. That is some silly, silly shit. And there are some people, as we used to say in the military, who are just ate up with the dumbass. Just, I mean, choking on it. Just, oh God, oh, oh, dumb. I mean, just, it's just ridiculous. And many of these people, who have a problem with the word hustle are the same people who will sit down, go out and get a degree that cannot earn them a return on their investment and wonder what the fuck happened to them. But they're hung up on the word hustle. They're hung up on the words working hard. They're hung up on the words delayed gratification. But they all over, I got a degree. I went to this school. I know so and such. So, what the fuck have you done with your life? I'm going to tell you something that I didn't know beforehand because I used to be 
deep into entitlement mindset. I felt that the world owed me certain things. I felt that people I did not even know owed me shit and was resentful when they did not give it to me. I was one sick, messed up little puppy. Then one day, life said, bitch slap, bitch slap, bitch slap. Oh, you're fucking homeless. Oh, you don't have any money. Oh, you lost your job. So what the fuck are you going to do? I had to perform. I was put in a situation where I had to perform or I was going to perish. That was the deal. Perform or perish. Do shit you, I did shit I never did before. Work two jobs. Slave. Sit on my feet 12 fucking hours in some bad shoes. If you've ever done that, you know what I'm talking about. Listen to people who were half my age boss me the fuck around. And left an indelible impression on me. And even when this was going on, it still took two and a half years and another layoff for me to fully get it. For me to fully understand it. For me to be in control of my life, I have to hustle. And the biggest hustle that I had to perform was on myself. I had to fake it until I made it. I had to have, I had to install, let's just call it ghost beliefs until they became real breathing beliefs. I had to think about certain things and hold on to them because there was this fight, this big, big fight in me. There was the little me and there was the big me. See, everyone has the little me and everyone has the big me. The big me is that entity, that side of you that can do great things. The big me wrote the books. The big me do, does the YouTube videos. The, that's that powerful side of you. The little you, that's the little scared bitch. And sometimes, because the little you is so small, it's punching the big you in the nuts. And what happens when you get punched in the nuts? You bend over and you get that uppercut. And that's what was going on. I was having that internal fight between being mediocre and great. Because understand, fear is a process. Fear is a process. Doesn't happen. Uh, doesn't happen overnight. It's a learned behavior. Fear is a learned behavior. You weren't scared when you came out the womb. When you were a little bitty baby, if someone threw your ass in the pool, guess what? You would start swimming. You were like, "Oh, I'm familiar with this. It's a little bit more room. It's just a liquid environment," and you start swimming. You have no fear. So the hustle that I had to pull on myself was to bitch slap my fears to actually create a new ethical operating system. I had to change so much stuff about myself because you cannot move ahead with fucked up beliefs. You, you have people 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old who are juveniles, who are emotionally immature and think that they are grown emotionally immature because they never ever worked on themselves they got to a certain chronological age and thought that was enough thought that was the whole enchilada that was the big deal I was like I'm 40 and I'm grown and I'm 50 and I'm grown no the fuck you're not if you're still doing childish things at 50 60 70 you are emotionally a fucking child and then when you put yourself in the position of a child you will be treated as such, regardless of your age, regardless. So after going through my personal metamorphosis, some strange things started to, to happen. I started to really not give a fuck what people thought about me. I really started to not give a fuck about what people thought about my ideals. Because, you know, I, I have female friends and I tell them about my rule, the 99% rule. Like 99% of the men or women you meet romantically are not the one. So why are you going to be disappointed when something that's going to happen a great preponderance of the time when it happens? Why are you going to cry and act stupid? Which is most people, I just want the one. I went on four dates this month and none of them panned out. My life sucks. I'll never find anybody. I'll never find anybody. I'm not going to date for six months. Fuck it. I'm going to go date for a year. That's the emotional immaturity. I don't care if it's business. I don't care if it's love. I don't care if it's church. The more that you participate, the more that you show up, the better you become if you learn from your mistakes. So 
Actually, what will help you become a great dater is the thing that many people avoid, dating, going out, meeting people. Same process happens in business. What would make you a better business person? Making sales, going out, meeting people, announcing what you have to sell, selling what you have to sell, talking about your business, being on point about your business. I don't care if you only have two nickels to rub together. You should be out there that, hey, my name is Gary the Salesman. I've got these widgets and I've got these gadgets and I want you to get one. And you keep doing your pitch and you keep talking to people and you keep pushing and you keep making it happen until one day you go home and your gadget bag and your widget bag is empty because you sold all that shit. It's a process. The meaning of hustle is self-ignition that's the meaning of hustle self-starter you to do anything when you can self-ignite when you're waiting on someone to light the match oh put it on oh this didn't catch wait a minute let me get some lighter fluid if you're one of those people that need all of that assistance to become motivated understand this the those who cannot self-ignite will be run controlled and manipulated by those who can it is no middle ground here it is none there's no middle ground either you self ignite and you create your own tribe process environment economy or you become part of someone else's and to a degree everyone is going to become part of the matrix which is this larger hierarchy of things that are going on but see this is the thing you can do so much on this plane that's ridiculous. If you put your hustle on high level, get your hustle on steroids, I'm talking about, you know, Neptune, Jupiter steroids, not even some shit on this planet, more than likely, they're going to invite you up to that higher level. You can earn your way up because the way that I see it, the way that I look at it, if you are not really paying attention to what's going on in the world, not just the United States, but the world. There's this shift that's happening because people have been dumbed down. We have more communication than ever before. We're more connected digitally than we've ever been before, but we're separated by ideology, color, creed, religion, so many things that separate us, yet we're sitting next to each other digitally all day long, ignoring each other. In that space, if you're a thinker, there's opportunity. There's a great deal of opportunity. If you are not a self-igniter, you're a victim. Oh, God, the world's horrible. Oh, God, you know, the affordable health care. Oh, God, the Republicans. Oh, God, the Democrats. Oh, God, oh, God, would someone do something and change these people? Why don't the fuck you do something? See, that's the problem. You have people sitting around on their asses waiting for someone else to facilitate change, yet they will not pick up one finger to do the very thing that they wish for. To me, that is the worst prison on the planet to be in. A prison of your own design, of your own architecture, and you get to a point where you will get stuck. You may want to leave. The gate is open, but you can't leave. Because you are rooted in your own belief system that holds you into mediocrity, emotional immaturity, and worst of all, flat pockets. Flat pockets. Because you cannot become a successful person long term. And I keep using the term long term because someone can create something and become a millionaire overnight. It happens all the time. Now how often do these people lose it all? That's where the emotional immaturity kills them. That's where the impulse-driven dri life kills them. That's the reason. Like, I'm going to give you an analogy, and a lot of women are going to love this. If you have a guy who's a bad boy, he's that bad boy. He's rough, he's rugged, and he knows how to put that hammer down. But he's also financially, emotionally, and spiritually stable. That's a dream dude for 9% of the women out there. Because the bad boy, that guy, that rough, rugged guy, doesn't give a fuck what society thinks of him. His downfall is his instability. 
That's his downfall, his instability. If he's stable, this dude can have 10 women and they all know about each other and they won't give a shit. I'm telling you this. That is the power of emotional maturity and stability. You can work your way through anything if you get those tenets nailed down. And that's part of the hustle you have to play on yourself. Because many people look at the word hustle and think it's a small world. It's a very small. To me, hustle is a universe. It's a universe with several different solar systems. So when you look at it in that broad context, then it becomes a little bit more intriguing, a little bit more exciting. But if you just look, hustling is just getting out of on people. If that is your takeaway, then that's your takeaway. But if you look at it as an opportunity to improve yourself, because you cannot hustle effectively without facilitating change. You can't do it. I couldn't do the stuff that I'm doing right now if I was the same person I was in 1998. I shudder and scream in my sleep when I think that if I had stayed that same simple-minded, entitlement-driven person where I would be today. I wouldn't have the friends that I have. I wouldn't have the life that I have. I, a lot of things would be different. They'd be dark. They'd be scary. I would be what I call a throwaway person. That's these people in society who have no purpose, not trying to have any purpose, don't contribute, don't even fucking volunteer the soup kitchen. They just sit back and want someone else to take care of them. And that number's growing. That number's growing. Because these people feel that life owes them something. I've had people do videos about me and my business, and I will tell you, like I said in 2009, I'll say it here in 2014. The reason Glendon 007, that's the former nomenclature of this channel, came into existence was to sell my products. I didn't come here to be your fucking friend. I didn't come here to be your buddy. I didn't come here to just do shit to do shit. I came here with a purpose. Along the way, I did make friends. Along the way, I got introduced to some exciting new concepts. Some great opportunities came along. So it's a byproduct of having a goal, not being afraid to hustle, not being afraid to own my hustle. Because I'll say it, I'll say it at the dinner party. Oh, what do you do? I'm a hustler. And it always starts a conversation. Always. And people are like, well, what kind of hustler you are? And then when I start dropping my intellect, all of a sudden, I got people following me around the fucking dinner party. And I said I was a hustler. It's like people opening up their phones. It's like, well, hey, let's call. Let's cut. Let's do lunch. Let's have a, you know, let's get together. Why don't you come over and meet the wife and the kids? Yes. I think I like you, hustler. <laughs> oh, that shit happens all of the time. It happens all of the time. So if you don't know the meaning of your hustle, and see, this is the thing. Hustle is just as unique as your DNA to you. I don't try to do anyone else's hustle. I learned that lesson a long time ago. It is better to forge your own thing and possibly do some other hustles. Like, to, you know, eBay is someone else's hustle. Amazon FBA is someone else's hustle. Do that, but in conjunction, have something that is uniquely yours. Something that you built, something that you created, something that you made. Some beautiful things are gonna happen, and, it's, and they have nothing to do with money. You do this, you will become a very powerful person. And when I say powerful, I'm not talking about, you know, you're pressing buttons and have people knocked off or assassinated. I'm talking about that you'll walk in a room and people will want to get to know you. People will listen to you. People will follow you. And it's not about the money. It's about that mental money. It's about that emotional currency. It's about stepping up and being the person that you can be, the best person you can be. This stuff happens. And so many people are kind of caught up on, you know, semantics. Or they're caught up in this. Because I had someone, and it's starting again, and that's why I'm, I'm starting to say this. 
because there's a lot of new people and if you're new to the G-verse, welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for getting the audiobook. But it's starting again. You know, you got a good message, but that mouth of yours, you use the word fuck entirely too much. You know, your language is horrendous. It's going to turn people off. Well, let me share a story with you. Close, close friend of mine, 2009, sat me down, read me the riot act, and said, you will never get into corporate America, or you will not get certain opportunities if you continue to use so much profanity. It's just not going to happen. And I said, you know, G, her, her name starts with, you know, her name starts with a G. I appreciate you, but that's me. And I'm at this point in my life that I'm going to be me in my business. I'm going to be in me in personal relationships. And if anyone can't deal with it or they don't like it, fuck you. So, and that's what I told her. And she got really offended. And we haven't talked. Well, everything that she said would not happen has happened. And this is the rub. I cuss more now than ever before. <laughs> more now than, you know why? Because people appreciate authenticity. That's me. I know that I'm not going to be a fit for a lot of corporate cultures, but I'm not trying to go there. I'm not asking for an invitation there because I'm out here in the world talking to you, selling my products to you, consulting with you, doing courses for you. I don't need corporations. I need you. And many of you understand where I'm coming from because a lot of you've been there or you're starting to go there. You're starting to catch hell. You're starting to realize that you were lied to. That when they told you, if you go to college, you'll be successful. Many of you are going, that was some bullshit. That was some bullshit on another level. I've got three degrees and I work at fucking Starbucks. And that's not to say working at Starbucks is beneath anyone. But when you spend $150,000 for your education, I would consider that a fail. You were not going to spend $150,000 to work in Starbucks. You can do that without the degree. Many of you are waking up. Many of you are starting to see reality because the teeth are so deep in your ass, every time you breathe, it hurts because of the pain of those jaws getting closer and closer and closer as they take a chunk of you off. So if you want to be a hustler, own up your hustle. Don't be afraid. If people ask me, I'm a hustler. I sell stuff. I do this. I call myself a disruptive hustler. I am a media hustler. I put out videos. I put out books. I do that. I, I, I put out information. That's what I do. And I'm very proud of it. And I'll say it to anyone that asks me. And it's amazing that when you become successful, how some things that were looked down upon, they, um, they come back and they're like, hmm, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I have six people dogging me right now that I'm ignoring. When I started this in 2009, uh, a lot of people told me about myself. Really, really did. I mean, you know, straight up hurt my feelings, called me crazy, said this was stupid, said, you know, YouTube's for kids. Now, I have six of those people who want me to break away from talking to you, folks who support me, to sit down with them and teach them YouTube. And I laugh. Every time I look in Facebook or I see my email, I just start laughing. And one, I really pissed off. I sent my hourly rate, which is 450 bucks. And I said, I'll give you a discount since you're a friend, 250. Hadn't heard from them. Hadn't heard from them. Because see, this is the thing. There are many of you on the same level. And you, you need to friend each other and start supporting each other and make that climb together. Because when you go through the hard work of building something, you are not trying to then let people in at the top floor. It's like, look, we were all in the dirt. We were all grimy. We were all working hard. I remember when we didn't have pennies to rub together. We were eating ramen noodles, Campbell's soup, and crackers. Not Ritz, but the saltines. That's what we were doing. Now, we got steak every night. Scrimps, not scrimps, but scrimps. You know, scrimps every night. We doing what we doing. Now, all of a sudden, someone wants to come in at the penthouse level and anyone with any degree of integrity is going to say, not no. Fuck no. That's what they're going to say. Because you realize that those people never had your best interest at heart. They weren't on your team. 
They weren't down for you. They were down for what they could get out of you. So get your integrity together. And no, there may be some dark days. Uh, hustling is not easy. It's a process. It's a system. It's a journey. And as you go through this journey, I want you to realize that some amazing things can happen to you and for you if you step out on action. This is none of that stepping out on faith. This is stepping out on action. Stepping out with a plan. Stepping out with an attitude. And just, I want to do this shit until I make it work. Not that it's going to work out. The goal is, I'm going to do this shit until it works. Until it is so crispy. It is so gorgeous. It is so awesome. It is so over the top that your cup of happiness is overflowing. It's like crazy, crazy ridiculous. It's like stupid, stupid ridiculous to the point that you give to others because you got it like that, that you could give away a thousand bucks and it doesn't hurt you and your family to the point that you can do all of these wonderful things because you went ahead and claimed your hustle. That's the meaning of hustle, claiming your hustle, being better than you were last year, being better than you were yesterday. That's the claim in your hustle. So be sure to get my free audio book, Pimping Your Mind. That's because that's what you're doing. You're pimping your mind. It's the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. Go ahead, hit that first link below, and start changing your life today. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.